Welcome back. So last time you may remember I had already done the CAD um, to create all the tool paths to mill the um, plug for the upper right uh, four plane skin. So here we are, um, got the machine just started out there with a the block of foam and off it goes and, uh, and the next day it's pretty much done. So this is how it came out and uh, it's looking pretty good there. And there was a couple of little tricky bits there because, you know, having to sort of mill underneath that lip. Um, but, you know, it's not the first time I've done that because I had to do the same thing on the wing one and also on the uh, the winglets. And then you can see the guys are getting the second platform ready to do the one for the left-hand side. And it's uh, halfway in the process of being welded up there. So uh, moving along, and these are the last of the big skins now, actually. And here the guys have just started laying up the mold for the first of the undersides of those uh, four plane skins. So they've got the, just the uh, lightweight layers down on that one initially. And back to the engine. So here you see over at the shop there where they've got the dyno and it's all bolted up there now. Um, the big flywheel there, we've got six bolts in there through to our flywheel on the engine. So that's uh, sorted out, and I uh, got the rest of the like the intercooler um, sorted out there. And you see, I got the battery hooked up, and I've got the tank hooked up there. And uh, the only thing remaining now is just the cooling um, system, and we need some sort of reducers there to to match that. But yeah, you can see I've created some temporary brackets there to hold the intercooler in place, and uh, the exhaust. I think um, Russell there is just going to turn that down a little bit, but this room has this massive airflow of ventilation that comes out of the ceiling um, not out of that tube there but um, up the front a little bit further I didn't actually get any video of it but uh, it flows like crazy amount of air through there so not worry about that too much anyway that'll be uh, next week uh, when more will happen on that here the guys uh, got that platform done there and just wait and put the foam on it and there's the other uh, mold there now it has the heavy weight um, all the heavy layers put on there so that one's pretty much done it'll be released and then uh, trimmed off cleaned up around the edges and that's the first of the lower four plane uh, molds done and the guys had to get a bit of a bigger chunk of foam out of our shipping container so um, because there's a whole bunch of other stuff in there they kind of had to pull everything out and it look like a yard sale there for a minute uh, anyway just to show you what's going on there we have uh, still the remaining blocks that we have in there's about seven big eight foot tall blocks in there um left still to do you know what we have left to do so we shouldn't have to get any more actually um by the time we finished you know doing the last of the mold and there's you know we've got some pile of scrap there we still use all that stuff mainly anyway uh, back to flight control so one of the things that we hadn't done yet you know jeff's been doing all these different little brackets and stuff he hadn't done this one yet um, he decided he wanted to get me to make a little mold for this one um, on the machine and so he gave me a bit of a Corian uh, countertop there a used piece um, and just to set that up on the machine and mill it and here you can see this is actually after the fact it's already milled it and just did it with a new 3 8 ball mill and that's basically how it comes out there and it, it doesn't look like it there but there's actually a little bit of an angle on that bottom sort of cut out there which is sort of key to the whole piece um, so that's basically done now quick sanding on there wax it up and you can actually lay a part in that and uh, here's that platform there ready now, uh, foam on there and a couple of heavy op objects on there to um, keep it, the foam from lifting up when it gets glued down. So here's the machine just about to start uh, doing the rough cut on this one. So this one again is the um, upper left side four plane uh, plug for that uh, four plane skin. And um, that'll be, uh, that was running yeah, yesterday, Friday and uh, just needs to be a little bit finish off uh, run on uh, Monday morning and then the guys can glass that one. And here's the uh, right hand side one so the guys have uh, gone and glassed that and put peel ply on that. Um, the reason why we put the peel ply on that now is because uh, when it's ready for putty you just peel that uh, the peel ply off and you don't have to sand or anything you can just spray the putty uh, directly over the top and it adheres nicely. So that one's uh, now ready for putty. And the backup battery that we're going to be using with the avionics has arrived and uh, with the respect to the rest of the avionics a lot of it's already shipped and it'll be arriving uh, next week and there's a couple of things on um, back order but hopefully not for more than a week or two. And as you can see here I ordered a Dymo labeler because uh, I'll be labeling all the different wiring 
um, so it's really easy for somebody else you know to come later and look and see exactly what goes to where um, because most of the wires end up probably just being uh, white um, with a white um, shielding and stuff on them so it's better to have labels on them and more on the avionics so I actually just made some progress here this week as well so just to go through a bunch of different things so there what you're looking at that was the magnetometer and uh, I've got the wiring running to that now and then there's this 28 pin connector that's going to be going through uh, the pressure bulkhead and here you can see I've got the battery isolator um, that, that basically you know cuts or enables the power from the battery to the rest of the electrical system uh, on board and I got the rest of the I got the ground wire there um, sort of and uh, the power wire and they're running through what's going to be a brass terminal through that um, pressure bulkhead there onto the inside so that's the, the red one obviously the main power wire and uh, as you can see here that runs to the back of the vertical power system if I can sort of move things around there as you can see so there's a big kind of connector at the back of the vertical power to bring that that power in because you know everything basically runs through the vertical power system there and then uh, I've got a grounding block there where every all the ground wires are going to be connected to and then a um, the same gauge, uh, 6 AWD, AWG gauge there running out uh, back through the pressure bulkhead there through what will be a brass connector. I just don't have it rendered there. And back out the other side and uh, to the battery. And then those two things there, those are the um, just a, kind of just a quick mock up of the outflow valves for the pressurization system. And here you can see there's the ground wire there, the black one, and that runs down to the battery and it also runs down the back to the engine mount, um, the engine frame. So there's a bunch of different things going on here. Also too, uh, underneath here, I've got the outside air temperature sensor and it seems like a decent place to put it. It doesn't need to be, or it doesn't want to be in the sun and it needs to be sort of on the outside of the aircraft. So um, it seems like a good spot. Then I've got the wiring running from that, again back through that 28 pin connector and then that runs through to the uh, GSU-25, which is the uh, Adaha system. Um, so it can do all of its uh, calculations on uh, airspeed and that good stuff. So I've got that, those wires all sorted out. And uh, let's see uh, what else we got going on here. There's the uh, ground wire running from that to the uh, temperature sensor, which they want a you know, really decent ground on that from what it says in the manual. So I've complied with what they wanted on that one. And uh, what else? So, oh, the CAN bus system. Basically, there's about 11 or 12 different um, units now on the CAN bus, and they're all basically daisy chained together. Before, last time I showed you, I had had uh, about half of them in, but now I've got them all uh, pretty much in there, sort of linked together, and uh, with all the pinouts defined for each of the wires there. So, uh, that one's pretty much done. Uh, so, the, the CAN bus harness pretty much done there, and I still have to do. Um, the power to each of the units there and then obviously um, each of those units has you know some other extra connectors in some cases which I still have to do um, but anyway you can sort of see there and there's the that's the G5 backup unit there that's um, being connected on the CAN bus there now as well and I've got the autopilot uh, servos there that's one of them there that's the one for pitch and there's the one for roll there I just highlighted so uh, that's all coming along uh, nicely and I think by the time the avionics start showing up next week, most of this will all be sorted out and I can actually start uh, laying it out on what will be the sort of platform board um, that I'm going to have. And there, there's the magnetometer, and again that's the, la the second last thing on the CAN bus and then that runs all the way down the back there, um, you know, through the keel and goes to the, uh, the uh, engine um, data unit there which I actually have moved now to the inside of the firewall so it's on the basically the cold side of the firewall which is safer. Anyway that's our update for this week and so uh, thanks again for watching.